According to the Health Ministry's latest COVID-19 update, there were 187 new Omicron infections detected in Singapore yesterday. 183 were imported and four local. MOH says more cases of the variant are being picked up because of its rapid spread across several countries and regions. Well, these cases were part of the 464 new cases reported yesterday. Professor Dale Fisher is here. He's a senior consultant at NUH's Division of Infectious Diseases. Prof. Health Minister Ong Yi Kang saying yesterday that Omicron now accounts for 17% of local cases and that an Omicron wave is imminent. What could that look like in terms of caseload? Is it a peak of more than 26,000, which was the case for Delta? Um. Uh, Olivia, this is where I've uh, you, you've heard me say many times that it's uh, it shouldn't be such a focus on on the case numbers because actually now it could get even more confusing. Uh, like when COVID first emerged, things were were very simple. We understood the severity, the transmissibility, who was vulnerable, the importance of protecting people and hospital systems and how to do it. Um, and even with Delta, we had a fairly good idea uh, within a fairly short space of time. But uh, Omicron has obviously emerged in the last two months and, and creates a whole lot of new unknowns. It's, it's clearly more infectious. Uh, it seems to be less severe, but communities over the world have got different vaccination rates and different uh, uh, past infection rates, recovered rates. Singapore, of course, is 87% fully vaccinated and most of the unvaccinated, of course, are children now. Almost a half, half of those people, have, of the vaccinated people, have had their, uh, their third jab. Uh, and, and since we started to come out uh, in, into the, the transition of, of COVID endemicity, we've had about 50,000 cases a month. So, and obviously, uh, the vast majority are very mild. So, so there's a, a very high level of baseline immunity in, in the community. So, so the point is, is that whatever the case numbers are, we're, we're very well placed to living with the virus. We just need to see how this variant um, uh, performs in the Singapore context. Um, in, uh, in September, October, we had uh, a low level of immunity in, in many of our seniors and, and we got into trouble there with with many severe cases, but but this, uh, I really hope we don't get fixated on the number of mild cases and we, we focus on the number of severe cases and hospitalizations, because that's what actually matters. But Prof, will this Omicron surge take about three months to subside as what we saw for the previous wave or even longer, you think? I mean, that's not what we've seen overseas. We're, but of course, overseas, all the, many of the restrictions have all been removed. So. So we've, we've seen Omicron um, you know, become dominant in, in many countries overseas very, very quickly, not, not, not three months. Uh, but of course, Singapore does have a lot of the, the social restrictions and the border controls still. So, so to, to bring in a, uh, a term we haven't heard for a while, I think Singapore will probably flatten the curve a bit and, and not allow that surge that we saw in South Africa and, and UK and the US because we've still got a lot of restrictions in place. Uh, we still have that capacity to, to tap on the brakes. Uh, not that we need to enhance these things. We're already uh, got these well instituted beyond what other countries are doing. But, but I think we'll see a, an, a temporary pause in the, in the easing of, of the restrictions, uh, at least until we're confident that the disease is not impacting us in a, in a particularly adverse way. Well, Prof, the WHO chief has said, quote, 2022 must be the end of the COVID-19 pandemic. So this is the first time you're speaking to an infectious diseases expert this year. What's your assessment of how 2022 will pan out? Well, WHO is, of course, still speaking globally. Uh, and if you think of the big picture, this there's still sort of uh, six or 7,000 people dying every day around the world. And, and their point is, is that this, this really has to stop. We've got to think more globally, share, share the, uh, the vaccines, the tests, the treatments. But uh, so that's where WHO is, is, is saying that they don't really 
see that any fairness in in some countries ending the pandemic while other countries uh, are still in the in the depths of the of, of the misery that comes from from the pandemic but I, I think uh, in Singapore uh, and other sort of uh, uh, similar countries we can be very optimistic I think we will see new variants emerge and the biggest concern really is if there's escape from the immunity that I was just talking about, the immunity that comes from vaccination or infection. Uh, because if, if a new variant did escape that, then it'd almost be like starting again. That's the worst scenario. The best outcome, of course, is, is that micro, uh, Omicron is not a, uh, a severe disease, uh, at least in our population with the, the immunity or, or whether it's just a, a milder variant. Uh, then there's a lot of mild disease, which will in fact reinforce the immunity and and and, and could even be a, a natural booster that uh, uh, will will make the the vaccine uh, less important perhaps in the future. So so our leaders still have to to do a balancing act between the restrictions which come with the the economic and social impact and 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 sort of pairing that with the the safety of the of the population it's this balancing act is still not over well thanks so much prof fisher professor dale fisher senior infectious diseases consultant at nuh Meanwhile, the latest data on Omicron from around the world suggests that it causes far less severe disease than previous variants, with five separate studies in the past week suggesting that Omicron doesn't infect the lungs as easily. And even though Omicron may be good at evading antibodies, research shows that it has far less success in avoiding the second-line defences of vaccines and prior infections. According to experts, Omicron's high transmissibility and mild infection may signal the beginning of the end of the pandemic as it creates herd immunity among people.